Have you ever applied pivoting to your data in Power Query's user interface? And if you have, and if that gave you an error in the past, sometime or the other, in this video, I'm gonna talk about that. What caused the error? And of course, how do you fix it? Let's go. All right, folks, I'm in Power Query here, and I'm working with this very simple data. Three columns right here, we have the date, we have the name of the person and we have the training that the person has attended. And obviously I would like to pivot this data. In short, I would like to present the data something like this. So in the rows of the pivot table, I would like to present all my dates right here. And in the columns right here, I wanna present all the names of the people. So you'll have maybe A, B, C and D in the columns right here. And in this cross tabulation matrix, which is right here, I would like to present the name of the training program. So here, here, whatever the name, name of the training program is, I wanna present that. Now that is clearly a pivot table. And let's just see how can we do that using Power Query. Of course, I am going to go ahead and first of all, select the name column and then head over to my transform tab. In there, I have something called as pivot the column. Now, when you're working with pivot column, let me just open that uh, for a second. So the first thing that you have to keep in mind that whatever happens to go in the columns of the pivot table, you have to pre-select that when you are using this particular option. So if you recall, our pivot table was something like this. We had the dates right here flowing downwards, which are in the rows of the pivot table. We had the columns like this, and which is where we had the names of the people. And that was pre-selected before I clicked on the pivot table option. And anything that happens to go in the values of the pivot table is what you select right here. Everything which is remaining will automatically go in the rows of the pivot table. So what you choose is nothing but what goes in the column, what goes in the values of the pivot table, and everything which is remaining actually goes in the rows of the pivot table. That's how it works in Power Query. Nevertheless, so use the names to create columns, of course, and in the value section of the pivot table, I would wanna have the name of the program. And of course, in the advanced options right here, I don't really wanna do any aggregation. I just wanna display the name of the training. So I'm gonna say, don't aggregate, click on okay, and uh -uh, we, we get an error. Now, the first thing to understand is that if you read the error, you would not be able to make sense of the error. It just says that there were too many elements in the enumeration to complete the transaction or the operation. But Let's just go take a look at, in the previous step, what caused the error. Now, I am looking at two coordinates. Coordinate number one is this particular date, which is November 30th, and this particular name of the person. So let's just take these two coordinates and go back and take a look at our data. So in the previous step, if I take a look at the 30th November for B, I have not one, but two rows of data. That means that if I were to make like a pivot table, so I write B here and I write 30th of November here, I am not going to have one value here. I am going to have two values here. And that is the reason why we got an error because two values can't be displayed in a cell. But hey, can we display two values? Sure enough, we can, but right now Power Query cannot. And that's the reason why we got an error. Now, if you take a look at this particular option, which is pivot column, if I just go to the gear icon for this, that is the reason why it was saying that, hey, would you like to summarize this? So maybe I'd like to count it. So if I just maybe click on the count and click on OK, now, rather than giving you the name of the training, it actually gave you the count of the training, which is number two, which is two trainings were found on that person for that date. If you now take a look at the formula bar, the formula has placed this list dot count in the end, which is where it is counting some form of a list. But hey, I don't wanna have a list. I wanna have the names of the training. But if I have the names of the training, this gives me an error. So let's just delete and let's just kind of get the error once again. So I happen to delete this and I close the bracket in the end and press enter. We again get an error. But the way to resolve the error is to use this optional parameter in the end. So I don't really want to count the list. I don't really want to aggregate. I just want to display the list as it is. And the way to do that is just, I'm just going to say each underscore. Underscore means the list which is the coordination of these two dimensions, which is B and that date, two values found, all those two values are going to be there in the list. So sure enough, if I just press the enter, this gives me a list and the list has got two values. Now that you have the list, what you can do is pretty much anything with the list. So I can just go ahead and say that, hey, I wanna just combine the values of the list. So I can say something like list 
sorry, text.combine. So text.combine. And the text.combine function, the first part happens to be give me the texts to combine. These are the two texts to combine, but I have to provide it as a list. So I sure enough, I did provide that as a list and the separator can be like a comma and a space and good to go. Now, if we press enter after that, you're going to see that both the names of the training programs have been combined. It is just not refreshed, so it's going to give you an error. If I go back to the previous step and come back right here, the error is resolved and that is nothing but the way that you resolve the errors. Now, a couple of things before I leave you with this, you have to understand that the underlying thing or the underlying field that we put it out in the values of the pivot table. So this is something that we put it out in the values of the pivot table and that is nothing but a text. Whatever operation you are doing here with the list has to work with a text. If you're working with dates, you have to convert the list into dates first, then do any of your transformations around that. But just note that whatever kind of data that you're working with, the list also have to jive with that particular data type. Otherwise, it's going to give you further errors, obviously. All right, that's been it. Let me know if you have struggled with these errors in the past and what was your mechanism to sort these errors out. And of course, if you have any questions and if you found the video helpful, please drop in a comment. I'll be glad to reply. Before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my M course in Power Query. These are the very kind of problems that we talk about in the M course and building your foundational understanding and then stepping through the logic to build more harder, more complicated solutions while writing the M code. If you'd like to check out the M course, the link is there in the description of the video. And I'm sure if you are struggling to learn the M language, the course is going to be super, super helpful. Thanks so much for sticking all around. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye now.